I just want to kind of start by saying this staff has come in and I feel like changed the mindset of the recruiting efforts at SMU. And what I mean by that is when you look at the players that they've brought in over the past, this past transfer cycle, every single one of them, you see it. And what I mean by that is you have starters, you have a captain in a Jonathan McGill, you have players that you're familiar with and know what you're getting in the Miami and the Liberty transfers. You have high-end developmental guys like P.J. Williams, a former top 100 prospect. Jalen Davis Robinson, one of the fastest guys in his entire recruiting class coming in with both with four years left um, of eligibility. And you you have it at a double-digit level, and most of them are for multiple years. You have Hyron White. You have Chris Meganson. Um, you have... Ja'Kai Clark, just off the top of my head. So, you know, just give me, you know, a, a, a little bit of grace if I forgot somebody with one year that can really help SMU's uh, Jordan Miller, um, that can really help SMU's 2023 season reach its full potential. And that's how they ch they've changed the mindset with the transfer portal this cycle. Last cycle, it was a lot of filling depth. They took some risks, um, some guys that were injured that didn't pan out. You know, Bo Corrales, for example. You had other players that really didn't play at their previous stop and didn't have buzz around them to play. And, you know, like a Cam Allen who could pan out, you know, maybe, but didn't have much buzz for him to play. Um, there were questions around David Abiara. There's still questions around him. Now you have a group that I really feel like as is all players who they they feel really good about. And they've turned away some to a fault. You know, a Kane Barong from Notre Dame, uh, you know, very skilled four-star tight end, former four-star. But how would he look, you know, coming off his injury? Was he good enough to play right away and impact this upcoming season? They ended up just going in a different direction. And in the high school recruiting efforts, I feel the same. They trusted their board and the class was pretty much done in June. They had one more right before the season, Jamari and Carroll. They did senior evaluations and found Kevin Allen. They had LaModric Spencer very high on their board. If he can figure out academics, he'll sign and become official at some point. And then they had Adam Moore, who they recruited and had on campus in the spring, kept recruiting him, went and saw him this fall, kept themselves in the race, and they beat out Syracuse and others in the end to get him. Now you look ahead to 2024, and you have two highly touted prospects who have offers from all over the country. And that sets the momentum and tone for this 2024 class. I go back to what we were talking about with Wildman and that group that was on campus in November to visit SMU. They're not probably not going to get half of those players. I mean, you know, Colin Simmons, he's not going to end up, you know, Aaron Fla uh, Alex, uh, Fla Alex Flowers and Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Flowers and Alex Rodgers. That's what it is. Aaron Flowers and Alex Rodgers. They are certainly in position where they got to keep chipping away and, and they got to make up some ground. There are some other players in there that probably aren't going to end up at SMU. You know, I think Brandon Booker, he did pick up that Texas A&M offer. We talked about that when previewing the 2024 class on an earlier podcast. It's a big offer for him. That's going to be tough to, you know, overcome. But there are players on that list that are realistic. Speedy Williams or uh, Speedy Nettle, uh, Nettles, uh, the, the Dallas Christian corner, who's a borderline four-star prospect who looked really good for true buzz gang, Harry Stewart, the Frisco Centennial running back who's ranked as a four-star on non three consensus. He's been on campus a ton. There are others that you could very well end up at SMU, but the mindset on this 2024 class. And I think this is the progression of this staff who 
when you look at the staff that's assembled, I would say they're a lot of them are built on being recruiters. And that's not a slap in the face in terms of their coaching ability. We know Rhett Lashley can, can coordinate offenses. Scott Simons did not forget how to coach defense last year. He was dealt a bad hand. There were some days that they were far worse than they should have been. But historically, he's been a part of teams that can play some defense. And he showed that at Liberty as well. And there are other coaches that have developed guys. You know, Rob Likens has developed wide receivers. Rasheed Rice, I was with him last uh, two weekends ago in Miami. He said his best wide receivers coach was Rob Likens. You know, that that is the guy that got the most out of him as the guy he was closest with. And he had a Bolitnikoff type season because of it. You know, Keenan Hall is, is one of the original Dallas guys. You know, Casey Woods built that UAB program up. It's a recruiting coordinator at Missouri. There are other guys that have been recruiting at a very high level. You know, the new addition, Maurice Crum, talked to a lot of people. A lot of people like what he's going to bring to the table as a recruiter. This staff is going to set its goals extremely high in 2024, in my opinion. I think you look at the group they've offered. You look at the groups, the, the group of guys that continue to recruit. They're picking up offers. They're um, starting to get high levels of interest. You look at Zach Smith, the Red Oak linebacker. He's now picked up, I think, four more offers since SMU offered um, and has really blown up. But SMU is probably going to be a factor in that one. And with the facility upgrades, with the potential to join a Power 5 conference, SMU is already recruiting at a Power 5 conference level. And they're trying to flex those muscle, muscles, whether it be relationships, whether it be NIL, they're doing it all. And talking with a bunch of sources, they're kind of done trying to take some developmental risks when it comes to recruiting. If they don't think somebody can play, they're not going to take that player. And and look, I there might be a guy here or there down the line where they might need to take and you know might make me scratch my head. It might make fans scratch their heads. But, you know, that's when it comes to you got to trust staff evals. You got to trust what their plan is. But at the end of the day, this staff is shooting very, very high in 2024. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of that that class Sonny Dykes kind of had put together before he ended up leaving for TCU. That's the type of level SMU shooting for right now. They're shooting for those highly touted prospects who they really think can play. And so far, so good. Uh, it's paying off with two really highly touted commits. Uh, next month, when it comes to March, they're going to be heavy on the junior days, heavy on uh, visitors. That's when they're going to really turn this thing up uh, into overdrive a little bit more. As far as the high school recruiting, they spent a lot of time out visiting prospects when it came to um, continuing to recruit transfers. They still had to recruit Ja'Kai, Nick Jackson, um, others uh, this, this cycle. And then, of course, Adam Moore, they had to go see. But they spent a lot of January going around and building relationships at high schools and continuing to do that, continuing to prioritize them because that's what they really want to pay off in 2024. And so far, they're very much recruiting at a power five level. If you look at the last two months, if you look around at some of the classes and, you know, people have asked me this question on the board, you know, what do you think SMU, where would SMU rank if they were in a power five conference? Well, it's very hard to answer that question because you have the fact that they aren't in a power five conference. So I can't just sit here and assume that well, X player would have come to SMU if it was a power five in a power five conference. How would that positively impact players' decisions when it comes to whether or not they'll jump on board with SMU? That's kind of the tough question to answer. How much would that have changed? I like to think it would, you know, would have changed Adrian Wilson's mind, the Keller Central uh, safety that that ended up going to Washington State. Maybe if SMU is in a Power 5 conference, he says, you know what? They don't have a safeties coach, but defense coordinator is going to be my safeties coach. I don't know him that well, but I, I like what I've heard. And they're in a Power 5 conference. I'm going to go there. 
we've seen some other guys who've just been so close through the years that end up just going to a power five school. Does Jonathan McGill McGill go all the way to Stanford originally the first time around if SMU is in a power five conference? Those are just hypo- a ton of hypotheticals. But the fact is SMU is recruiting at a mid power five like level. And I mean that in the sense of if they were in any of these power five conferences, they would be in the middle of the pack. Okay, you can have the impact if they're in the SEC. The staff is recruiting at a very strong level. They could be in the middle of the pack. Because they'd have the SEC logo behind them. You could assume and think that they would be middle of the pack in the SEC recruiting-wise. They're in the Pac-12. Well, we already know they're assembling groups of players between high school and transfers that is very much like middle of the road, you know, Pac-12. Again, how would the high school recruiting change if they were in that conference? They could be maybe even a little bit higher. But this is a group that is no doubt, I feel like, showing why SMU should be in a Power 5 conference. Their pitch, their relationships, the school, you know, has NIL behind it. The school has facilities. You know, just just kind of talking with recruits that have picked up offered, they really seem to like the staff. And for the most part, they're offering guys that have a good bit of recruiting attention. So I'm really high on what this staff is doing. SMU is recruiting at a power five level. And if if they can you know keep this thing going, they, it really is trending to be teed up for an impressive run uh, when they do get that power five conference invite. Because I do think, you know, between uh, the Pac-12 looking to expand, I think SMU is still in a very, very strong position at this point. If they do expand, to land an invite. I think it's the right move for the Pac-12. I think you're seeing some of the guys who really, really pay close, close attention to conference realignment notice that. And I think SMU is between the coaching staff, between facilities, NIL, they are investing to go that route. And honestly, it really starts with recruiting at that level. And SMU is doing just that.